We're at 36B, towards the bottom of the page. And we begin our discussion on tefillin going on the left hand and the implications there with respect to an amputee, a left-handed person, and someone who has control with both of their hands. I think it's called ambidextrous, isn't that the word? Someone who can write with both hands. So we get to all of that. Um, but as in the past, we have to first go through the Gemara, and uh, we'll see from the Gemara's sometimes open-ended statements, allowing for different interpretations, thus leading to different conclusions in halacha. And um, especially when it comes to the issue of an amputee, a discussion later with respect to where on the hand the tefillin go, because the, the verse says hand, and yet we put it up on the forearm. So there is the uh, implication that at least one is required to have a hand, which would mean if someone had an arm, the lacking a hand, maybe they're not required to have tefillin at all. So a lot, some of the discussions are all going to converge, um, leading to interesting halacha conclusions. So we'll bear that all in mind, and, but we'll get with that with the Gemara itself. Bottom of 36b, third line, beginning of the line. Third, last line, sorry, beginning of the line. Tan Rabbanon, our sages taught, Mishnaic age text. Yadcha, the verse says to put on tefillin on your hand. Says the text, Zeus Moil, this is the left hand. The Gemara begins with a statement, as an emphatic statement. That is to say, at least the implication is, that uh, this is what they know from tradition. This is what they've been doing, right? They've been putting on tefillin since Moshe Rabbeinu came down at Sinai. So they've always been putting it on the left hand. Now the question is, how we derive that? In other words, the conclusion here almost comes before the analysis. The question is only how, how you get there. So, Ata Aimer Ismail, excuse me, you are saying that it goes in the left hand. Perhaps the verse means you mean the right hand. So, time will therefore the verse reads. The Gemara is going to cite to three different verses, each of which describe both hands. But first, it uses the word hand unqualified and then it says right hand implying that when the word on hand is used unqualified it's referring to the left hand that's the inference so let's see the first pasuk first verse is from Yeshaya verse reads Af yadi yasta aretz, God speaking indeed my hand is a foundation of the earth Viyamini, my right hand Tav Chashemayim measures the heavens so it, the verse describes both hands of God, metaphorically, obviously. But it describes first my hand, and then my right, Yamini. So the implication is that when you use the word hand unqualified, it means the left hand. Because the other one is the right hand. Similarly, the verse reads, this comes from the Shiraz Dvaira. After Dvaira, the prophetess defeated, successfully defeated Sisra. Right, that was his name, Sisra? She wrote a poem, and she writes, Yostel Yesed to Shalchana. Her hand was sent to the, to the peg. Yael, yeah. Sorry? Yael's one who killed his So she's speaking, so oh, Devoto yeah. is speaking about Yael. The Amina Lalamas Amelim, and her right hand, where's the translation here? She stretched her hand to the peg, and her right hand to the laborer's hammer. Again, first using the word hand and then saying right hand, implying that the word hand itself means left. Weimar says elsewhere, in Tehillim, Lama Tashiv Yemincha, Lama Tashiv Yadcha, why, it's like a prayer, why would you take away your hand, Yemincha Mikarev Hekecha, and your right hand from our midst. Again, implying that hand without qualification means the left. Okay. So the Gemara now says as follows. Now, if that's your, if that's your uh, assertion, if this is your conclusion, if this is how you come to the conclusion that the word hand means left, because every, because other times 
the Torah uses the word hand, and then the left, and then right hand, implying that plain hand means left, then you have to go to the entire Torah every single time where it mentions both hands and see if this pl- to see if this rule holds up. And so long as it doesn't hold up one time, you're th- the hole in your theory. And this is what Rabbi Yaisi does. Rabbi Yaisi ha chayrim. Rabbi Yaisi the chayrim. What does chayrim mean? It's a nickname or a last name. So Rashi says it means that his nose was uh, somewhat deformed and it was impressed. And it wasn't protruding properly. And, uh, he comes to this conclusion from the laws of, uh, of uh, defect um, which would um, disqualify a koyan from serving in the temple. And one of them is called the khayrim. And that, the Gemara says, refers to someone whose nose is impressed, not properly protruding. And therefore, Rashi says that that's what this means. He was called Yaisi HaKhayrim, Yaisi the Khayrim, because he, he had that defect. Taisus doesn't like the idea that a person is called by a defect. This is how he, he's remembered for generations. His nickname is a defect, reminding everybody forever and ever that he, that he had such a nose. So therefore, Yaisi says it, it must be some location. Either way, Yaisi the Khayrim, whichever one it means, either location or something about his physical feature. Is there, not, is there another Yaisi in the Gemara? There are a few Yaisis. Yeah, but in what way would you distinguish him? Rashi is saying you distinguish him by a negative feature on his face. And Taisus doesn't like the idea that he's being distinguished that way, and therefore Taisus is saying it must be a location. Chayr, it must be a, the, the town he, or he came from, or the city he originated from. There's a problem with called by not to borrow to insult a person by something he can't change. And in perpetuity. Like someone short or someone In perpetuity, you're, you're, you're remembering him as someone who had a chayr. It's not nice. It's not serious. You know, people teaching a lesson, you should do this, and I should not do this. It's against me. Yeah. I like it. My nickname is Gunai. Yeah. Aderech Hatzachos, in some kind of somewhat humorously, perhaps it's here to to set the record straight on the Jewish stereotype. said, we have Jews all the way back then who didn't have noses who protruded. It's a no, joke. No, but, but that's on the contrary. That's that, that's a proof that we do have big nose because he's the because he's the exception. <laughs> he's probably anyway, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it, yeah. At any rate, so you see the heart. I mean, he says Matzinu. We find elsewhere in the verse where you mean Shnikar uh, Yad. We have elsewhere where the word Yad unqualified means the right hand. So in other words, these three verses said her hand or his hand, and then said Yiminoi his right. Without saying his right hand, just saying Yemina or Yemina, implying that Yemina just meant right hand, and then Yatcha meant left hand. But here, uh, with respect to the story of Yaakov, and when he's blessing his grandchildren, Menashe and Ephraim, and Yosef notices that he switches the hands, right? Famous story. So he says, we see there that the word right meant the right hand, or that the hand, or the word hand unqualified meant the right. So Shnemar the verse reads, Yosef and Yosef saw, ki Yosef's other that his father placed, Yad Yeminoi, his right hand on the head of Ephraim rather than Manasha. So here, says Rabbi Yosef, the Pasuk doesn't say Yosef's other of Yeminoi, that he put his right, but rather Yad Yeminoi, his right hand, meaning that the word hand can also mean the right side. It doesn't always mean necessarily the left. What's the response? Bidach. The one who still substantiates that the word hand unqualified means left. How does he say it? Well, don't bring that as a proof because the, because the verse qualifies it. The Idach, number one, responds, Yad Yeminoi. The verse clearly stipulates, Yad Yeminoi, his, le- his right hand. So it is qualified. Don't bring that as a proof for when it's unqualified. And therefore, um, Ikri. Yad Stam Allah Ikri. But the right hand is not, qual- is not called Yad without being qualified at all. And therefore, when our verse says, put one on your hand, unqualified, it means your left hand. Okay. And Rabbi Nassim Rabbi Yossi says, and it's Aruch, you don't need any of this stuff. You don't need to go through, you don't have to go and uh, comb through all of Scripture to see if the word hand always means the left. No need to do that. From the very verse itself, you can derive it. How do I remember the verse reads? Ukshartem, Ukshaftem. You shall write it, and you shall place it. It doesn't say one after the other, but the verse says in one verse, you shall bind it on your hand, and you should write it on your doorpost. And therefore, we are comparing in many different ways throughout the Gemara. We'll see this where we compare the writing to the placement. So what does this help us to do with the right hand to the left hand? Just as it is, at least for the majority of people, the way Rashi frames it, writing is with the right hand. So therefore, so to the binding, 
Biyamin must be with the right hand. Now, the key of the Kshir of Biyamin, because I'm binding with my right hand, Hanacha Bismarl, my placement has to be in the left hand, because I couldn't possibly bind it to my own hand with the left hand. Following? So if the Torah says to write it, to place it, or sorry, to bind it, Kshartam, to bind it, the same way you're writing it, so the same hand which writes, my right hand, is the same hand that should be the, do the nodding, my right hand. And therefore that means that the placement has to be in the left hand. So kind of like saying, you know, every most people, are their dominant hand is their right, so use your dominant hand to uh, place uh, uh, it. Yes, yes, that's correct. That's correct, that's, that's, that's correct, that's very that properly said? noted, and I'm gonna, we're going to elaborate on that in a second. So we're going to set ourselves up for the halacha. So now Rabbi Yisi Yachar, Rabbi Yisi, the Chayrim, who earlier said that you cannot derive from the verse uh, what the word Yad means, whether it's right or left hand, you can't because there are verses which say both ways, in his view, because it says Yad Yamin, the right hand, when Yaakov switched his hands the other way, right? So he didn't like that, that teaching. So we're, so Hanachal, this moment, how does he know that the, the Tzvonah goes in the left hand? Nafkala, he would derive, made the Nafkala of Nassan, the same way Rab Nassan did, what Rab Nassan said, that uh, the writing needs to be the same thing as the binding. Okay. I, I'm going to put a pin in what you said, but I'm going to come back to one more line. Ravashi, Ravashi says, a third interpretation. So we have, so we have two, inter- two reasons for how we came to the conclusion that the hand means the left hand. One is from the verse saying on your hand unqualified, and we prove from elsewhere that the word, un, that the word hand unqualified means left, number one. Number two, um, because we compare the writing to the placement, and the writing is with the right hand, and therefore your placement should be with the right hand, and thus it has to be placed on the left hand. And then with the third interpretation, Ravashi says, the verse reads, miyotcha. the verse reads, it should be for a sign on your hand. But this time, when it says your hand, it has a hey at the end. Instead of yud dalad chaf, which means your hand, it says yud dalad chaf hey, on your hand. Same teaching, but we're adding a hey at the end. Ksid be hey, it's written with a hey. Thus teaching you keha. Take the last two words, your hand, but we add a hey. Take the last two letters of the word yodcha with the extra hey, and you have the word keha, which means the weaker hand. Yad keha, your weaker hand. Okay, so... Wait a second, sorry, I have to sneeze. Oh, never mind. Amalei Rav Abba, the Rav Ashi. So Rav Abba retorts Rav Ashi, ve'ema yodcha. That's the case. When you put the hay at the end, it means the weaker hand. So if you, if you take the way, if you take the hay away, it should mean your stronger hand. Now if that's your case. Then the other verse, which does say yotcha your hand without the hay, good morning, she bekoyach, maybe means your stronger hand. So you have one hand. One time it says hand with there with the hay means the weaker hand, but the other time it says hay without the hand without the hay, it says yotcha hand without the hay. Maybe that means a stronger hand. Amalei Vashi responds miksi beches. Does it say with a ches? Stronger hand cut would be kaf uh, yodcha with a ches. Kayach. But so yodcha alone without a hay just means your hand. If you were to use a ches, then that would mean a stronger hand. If we don't have a ches, we have elsewhere a hay added for some inexplicable reason because it could have it would have meant the same thing without the hay, thus teaching you weaker hand. So you have three interpretations. One that the word yodcha means hand. Um, hand always means left, number one. Number two, um, yotcha, weaker hand. Number three, the hand that you don't write with. Now, where does this become a sticky issue? What if somebody is stronger with their right hand, so they pitch a baseball with their right hand, and they'll throw a ball with their right hand, That's most, people. most people, but then they'll write with their left hand. It's an anomaly, but it happens. So which hand should you be putting on Tefillin? Well, it depends. If you're the view that the reason why you're putting the left hand is because it's weaker. So the fact that you happen to write with your left hand doesn't make your left hand the weaker hand. I'm sorry, it doesn't make your left hand the stronger hand. And if you're still be putting on your tefillin with your left hand, on your left hand, even though you're writing with that hand. But if the reason why we're using the left hand is because the one you don't write with, then you should put it putting on tefillin on the right hand. Now, furthermore, if I'm of the view that the word hand always means left, then I don't care if it's the weaker or stronger, it's always left. Maybe. So here already, even though the Gemara, even though it just seems like it's the background, where the halacha is the same, they all come to the conclusion using left hand, but they're telling you different reasons how you got there. 
But depending on the reasons, it would have a different halachic ramification. Especially when we get to the issue of someone who is, God forbid, an amputee. Does putting the tefillah in the right hand even qualify? Or maybe if you have no right hand, if you have no left hand, you then finished. No, no tefillah. Maybe, maybe you're exempt from tefillah altogether. So this is all going to come into play. I'm just point, I'm helping you put pins in these things because we're going to do more help, more gemara because there's going to be more of the gemara that's going to play into this question here. But at least already now you see the beginnings of of, of such a question. We're going to get to the halacha. We're going to get to the halacha soon. But I'm just telling you where this halacha conclusion comes from based on how you understand these different things. But they can't put it on anyway. They have one hand. No, someone, put on. someone can help them. Yeah, someone can help you. That's right. And it could be very difficult, but there are, you know, God forbid, there are those people who, have, who are amputees and find all kinds of creative ways to use their feet, to use their mouth, to, 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 miss, to do what they're missing. It's, it's, quite, it's, quite actually, it's quite actually inspiring to watch them. At any rate, but I wanted to show you Teisvis so you can already see the beginning of the discussion here. Taish on the left, which says, Maksiva b'yamin, afkshida b'yamin. So he's commenting on the, view, on the view which says that the reason why we put it on the left hand is because your right hand is for writing. Right? Now, Besamuch, later, on Rina, we're going to say, shortly, the iter, that a, right, that a left-handed person, it's called the iter, maniach tefillin, puts the tefillin b'yamin on his right hand. She smiloi, which is his left, meaning his weaker hand. Now, Bahashna now, adam akaisa b'yaminoi, Someone who writes with his right hand, but Prashar, but the rest of his the majority of his actions, eating, throwing a ball, or whatever else it is, is smiley with his left hand. Yesh, this topic, you're in doubt now. Which one should you put on Tvilin? Because he writes with his right, but he's doing everything else with his left. So if you're following the issue of writing, he should be putting on his left hand because he's writing with his right. But if you're looking at the issue of which hand is weaker and which one is stronger, he should be putting on Tvilin on his right hand because the majority of his actions is done with his left. So says the Taisvis, the Shema, perhaps, Yeshida Mois, we can compare him to Shailat Bishtayadav, like someone who has control over both, hand, both hands, which is another whole other set of halachas. So you already see at the beginning here the issue of not really sure where to place things based on the reason that we get. So I'll just put a pin on that, and when it comes to the halacha, we'll see, we'll come to, we'll see some sort of conclusion. But from now, we're going to move forward into the Gemara about uh, an amputee and then a left handed person. So a few more lines. Ketanoi. Continuing where we left off. So the first line begins with the word ksiv, then it says beches, and then we have ketanoi. The more says ketanoi. Let us suggest, says the Gemara, that the issue as to whether or not we derive, whether or not we, whether or not we have the view, that the letter hey, added to the word yadcha, your hand, is to teach you that tefillin goes in the weaker hand, so let we, we can we can suggest that this is a Tanaic dispute, right? This was an issue we raised by Ravashi. Ravashi is from the le, from the latter Amaraic scholars. From the, he actually was from the age of the editors of the Gemara. So it's way at the end of the Gemara age. So the Gemara is now suggesting perhaps it can be traced back to a dispute that we find in a Mishnahic age text, where there it says Yatcha, your hand Behe is written with the letter Hey. So you smile. This is the left. This is the left hand. Again. Because of the word Yad Keha, your weaker hand. That your weaker hand comes to teach you that you can write, that you can put on tefillin even on the stump. Like even if your hand is not that, not, not that you derive from here that your hand should be, the, that your tefillin hand should be the weaker hand, as was suggested by the first opinion. Yad Keha, your weaker hand. But meaning rather, even if your hand is weakened, namely, the person has, God forbid, an amputated from his elbow down, so his hand is weakened, so he too should wear tefillin on, the, on his left stump. Or, doesn't mean since you're obligated in tefillin, and tefillin has to be on a hand that actually has a hand, so maybe if you're, having, if you're amputated, from the elbow downward, God forbid. Then one still required to wear tefillin, but not on the left hand, but on the right hand. Another halachic. This question we're going to put a pin in. 
just point, as we're going through the Gemara here, I'm pointing out the different issues that can be raised, and then we'll see the conclusions we get to the halacha of God, for God willing tomorrow. But at least now you can see from the Gemara itself that things aren't 100% clear. And furthermore, is, there, is the second opinion arguing with the first one? We're just taking a different turn. Another question, which raised in the next text as well. Tanya Idav, we've learned in a different Mishnahic age text. Ein lo Yisraya, a person has no left arm. Now this, now this person is not just amputated from the elbow downward, but it's amputated from the shoulder downward, God forbid. So says the text, Patim not tefillin. He's completely exempt from tefillin. Almost implying completely. Doesn't even put it on the right hand. Not almost implying. That seems to be the reading. Others say, Yadcha your left hand, Yadcha your hand, your weaker hand, to include a weakened hand, namely someone who's amputated from the elbow down. So we have two statements which seem to not even coincide. One's talking about, the first statement's talking about a completely amputated hand, and the other one's talking about an amputated hand from the elbow downward. So are they arguing? And um, and Achayim are saying that you would put your tefillin on the right hand, and therefore the only exclusion is or inclusion is for someone who has a weakened hand, or as Tosa says, Mara, they're each saying two separate statements. One's talking about a fully amputated person exempt, and the other one's talking about a partially amputated person, and he is still obligated because of the, all this un, because of the, all this uncertainty in what the text directly means. All of these things lead to various different conclusions in the Gemara and the Halach, as we'll get to God willing tomorrow, about whether or not, uh, or what type of amputee is obligated to put on tefillin, which hand is he obligated to put on tefillin, and if he does, does he make a bracha, all the rest of that, which God willing, we'll get to tomorrow. What do you do if a guy has a paralyzed Okay, we'll do a few more lines before we, get to, before we leave off for tomorrow, yeah? You can't use it to tie in the left hand. I would imagine he's an onus, unless he gets people to help him. Chabad guy. Anybody around this table would be happy to help, right? I know, no, I'm just joking. It's okay. I know, no, I was saying with a just joke. Okay, a few more lines before we leave off for tomorrow, the halacha, because I want to. There's, there's one more, there's one more um, statement. The next two statements are important. Another two pins we should put into the uh, Gemara here before we get to tomorrow, the reading on the halacha, and then forward into where, which location on the hand you put on, and the head. Tanah Rabbanon, our sages taught, Iter, a left-handed person, Maneach Tefillin B'yeminoi, puts on Tefillin on his right hand, Shehus Tmarloi, which is his left, meaning his weaker hand. So as mentioned before, it's his weaker hand, or is it the hand that he doesn't write with? And that becomes an issue of someone who writes with one hand, but his weaker hand is the other hand, as we mentioned before. In which we'll come to halach conclusion tomorrow. The Gemara asks, "Vatanya, but we learned maniach b'smaloi that he should put it on his left hand, shu'smaloi shalakol adam, which is the actual left of everybody." So one text says that if you're if you are stronger with your left hand, you put it on your right, which is I'm sorry. Yes, you put it on your right side, which is your left, meaning your weaker hand. And the other text says, "No, you keep it on your left hand, even though it's weaker." Even though it's stronger, I'm sorry. Keep it on your yes. The separate text says, yeah. "Keep it on your left." Even though it's stronger, contradiction. If I'm a lefty, do I put it on my right hand? One text. Or do I put it on my tefillin? My left hand. Other text. Putting on tefillin. Forget the bracha. Just literally putting on tefillin. Again, two statements. One says, "If you're left-handed, put it on your right hand, which is your weaker hand individually, or keep it on your, or keep it on your left hand, which is everybody's weaker hand, even though it's your stronger hand." Quick Clear? Quick, quick question. I have a stronger left hand. If you're defining hand from here, however, my strength. We'll get to that tomorrow, God willing. We'll get, we'll get to that tomorrow, God willing. Okay. Arm versus hand. Okay. Amar Abaye. So Abaye answers. Kitanya hi. When the other statement says, you keep it on your individual left, on your left hand, which is everybody's weaker hand, even though it's your stronger hand, says Abaye, this is Bishal Yadav, this is one who's ambidextrous. So, if you're an actual left-handed person, put it on your right hand. If you're ambidextrous, put it on your left hand, which 
is equally strength to the other hand, apparently. Okay, so these are this is the uh, these are all the pieces. Some of which are a little fragmented, as I mentioned earlier, because of the questions of how we understand it. And we saw a Toysvis, and God willing, tomorrow we will place them all into their proper halachic rubiks, rubiks, that word, and um, we'll come to some consensus, God willing, and we have the papers here, which we'll look at tomorrow. Okay, have a wonderful day, everybody.